good morning good afternoon good evening from whichever parts of the continents you are in welcome 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 back to adonai's kingdom the channel we talk about the most high god we talk about jesus christ yeshua hamashiach we talk about adonai we talk about the holy spirit the king of kings and the lord of lords we we che we see the old testament and then we teleport to the new testament and see how things are and what and how things are supposed to be how we are supposed to be living the righteous life it's only by grace the grace of the most high god that we can manage so let's start with our word of prayer my name is Waudi the messenger let's start with the word of prayer father lord i thank you and bless you and honor you i lift up your name holy 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 is your name king of kings and lord of lords father i bless you i glorify you and i thank you for the things that you're doing for us protecting us guiding us filling us with wisdom knowledge and understanding of your word father i thank you and bless you and bless each and every viewer listener from whichever parts of the world they are in let them open their hearts and listen to your message the way you want them to live a glorious life holy spirit we welcome you take control of this message use me as an oracle of your word in jesus name amen and amen well easter passover is over it's a new week a new day but before we say it's over it's not yet over until it's over so today's message the title is after jesus or yeshua's crucifixion after yeshua's crucifixion after they had crucified jesus what next what happened uh, uh you notice that uh jesus just before he was crucified he was betrayed and we learn a lot from this betrayal it that was in luke chapter number 21 and verse 48 the book of luke chapter 21 was it uh, chapter sorry 22 and verse 48 this is where jesus said but jesus said unto him judas betrays thou the son of man with a kiss that's how jesus was betrayed and it ended up that you had to go to the cross to die for our sins and you see this betrayal it just it goes a long way because as human beings i know so many of us 90 percent of us have been betrayed by very close people we've been betrayed not with the kiss but we learn and people who betray you are the closest ones they took talk good of you but the moment they you turn that's how they stab you so jesus was betrayed and yeah <clears throat> that's how they took him the pharisees came took him they went took him to the cross and they crucified him but when it comes to jesus crucifixion it shows us there's a lot he gained a lot 
he didn't lose. If anything, he gained a lot because he was given the authority. He, he's the one who will have the authority to open the book of life. He is worthy to open the scroll, the book of whereby it, it's got all the secrets in the spiritual world. world. And that book was closed. The only person who saw that book was given a snippet of, a, of what might be in that book. And then he was told to close it. Was Who was it? Daniel. And that was in, if we look at Daniel, Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4. God said to Daniel, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, that's close the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. The time of the end, that's in Revelation. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. The book as we speak now, the book is shut. It's been closed. And what's happening now? People are running to and fro. Knowledge is increasing. Everyone, if as long as you are ready, you find your, you get the knowledge that you want. Those ones who don't want, they stay like that put. But usually you find that people, uh, knowledge is increasing. And what what I might ask you is, for you, what are you doing with your knowledge before the King of Kings opened the book? After the revelation, what are you doing with your knowledge? Are you just using knowledge to become an antichrist? Or are you doing, using the knowledge to expand the kingdom of God? Because when, after Jesus' Jesus' crucifixion, after his death, when he came back, he left one strong message. We have to populate the earth with the words of Jesus so that everyone can enjoy it. So you have to ask yourself, what are you? Okay, so if we jump to Luke chapter 23, uh, yeah, 23, verse 44 to 49. 23, verse, uh, verse 44 to 49. This is uh, Jesus was on the cross. Verse 44 to 49. It was about the sixth hour. I think say something like midday. And there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. That's how strong our king is and how, how lovely he is loved by Jehovah. To the point that there was darkness. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. 47. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. Have you ever asked yourself, why will this moth hit their breasts and then return? Hallelujah. They smote their breasts with sorrow for the judgment of God, which was to be sent. So this one, it was showing fear, alarm. They were so alarmed. They were fearful. And also anger. And with this one, we can jump to Isaiah. 
the book of Isaiah 32 the book of yeah Isaiah Isaiah chapter number 32 and verse 12 Isaiah 32 12 says Isaiah says beat your breasts for the pleasant fields for the fruitful vines and before that in that verse 11 as I was saying tremble you you complacent women shudder your daughters who feel secure strip off your clothes put sackcloth around your waist and then that's when after that he says beat your breasts for the pleasant fields for the fruitful vine and for the land of my people a, a land overgrown with thorns and prayers yes mourn for all houses of merriment and for this city of rivalry where maybe happiness where people go do all types just to forget their whatever their sorrows so you see beating their breasts it was just fear it's something that's in the bible it carries a lot of weight beating smoting the breasts okay and then after jesus after after jesus was uh, crucified that was uh, let's see uh, when he came back when he came back to life okay in chapter luke chapter 24 this one this is quite a long one but let, we'll just go bit by bit look look chapter 24 from uh verse 13 to 53 this this what what happened and behold that was after jesus resurrected and behold two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was which was from jerusalem about three score furlongs maybe two miles or three miles something like that and they talked together of all these things which had happened and it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned jesus himself drew near and went with them but their eyes were holding and they that they should not know him see we walk with jesus most of most people walk with jesus but they are it's like their eyes sorry their eyes are covered completely and he said unto them what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad and one of them whose name was cleophas answering said unto him ah art thou only a stranger in jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days and he said unto them what things and they said unto him concerning jesus of nazareth which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before god and all the people that's how great jesus was and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him but we, we trusted that it had been it had been he which should have redeemed israel and beside all this today is the third day since these things were done yeah and certain women also of our company made us astonished which were early at the sepulchre and when they found not his body they came saying that they had seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said but him they saw not and then this is what jesus says to them that's how blinded we are we don't even notice when jesus is around and then he said to them oh fools and slow of heart to believe 
all that the prophets have spoken. You know, there are things that we are being told, the prophets of the old, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Isaiah, and then we come to the New Testament. I mean, it's we be we are being reminded, even the New Testament, Paul says of the old about the old, even James talks about the old testament. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Because had they been following the word of the Lord, they won't be surprised that these things are happening. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures that the things concerning himself. So Jesus, and that's what Jesus used to do. He used to talk about himself from the Old Testament. But unfortunately, nowadays, we choose the Bible, which is the, the best part, the, be, the part that soothes our minds, our hearts. And the beginning at Moses, okay. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went and he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went in to, to tarry with them. And it came to pass that as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. He gave thanks. He gave thanks unto the Most High. And they said one to another, Did not our heart? Uh, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. That's when they started realizing, Gosh! And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? You see, what these guys are saying, they felt it in their heart, like the heart was burning. How many times have you been praying, thinking of something, ideas come to your mind, and you feel, you feel your heart is heavy, and yet you ignored? That's why I'll always keep on saying, don't ignore your instincts, never ever. Because these instincts, they're the ones that really help you. It's like the Holy Spirit is the one that's guiding you. So don't ignore it completely. Just follow. You might be, think you might be thinking that you're following your instincts, but it's you're following Christ. He's trying to lead you the best way that you can't even imagine. So, yeah, these guys, the moment you give thanks to God, you know, when you feel that heart, the heaviness, and then you give thanks to God, the moment you give thanks to God, your eyes will be opened on the spot. Hallelujah. So, yeah, in uh, this scripture, it talks about how Jesus moved to all these people and saying that the Lord is risen. Uh, it talks about how everybody went and how things started happening there and then. Uh, let's jump guys, to Mark the book the book of Mark Yeah, there's something I wanted to show you in uh, Mark chapter number 16, eh? verse 13 to 20. Mark 16, 13 to 20. It's about instructions here. Yeah. Mark 15 and... Um, hallelujah. Yeah. M Mark 16. 
and they went and told it unto the residues, neither believed them. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven at as they sat at meat. His disciples were sitting and then Jesus appears to them. These are the instructions that that's what I'm, I was saying after crucifixion, after the resurrection of the Most High, Yeshua, what happened? This is what happened. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen after he had risen. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That was the first thing he was telling them. And that's what we are supposed to be doing, each and every one of us. Go ye into all the world. Use whatever means you have. Preach the gospel. Pass the message of the Most High God. To every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall not shall be damned. And these signs, after that, he, he gives us promises here. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. This is what we are supposed to be doing, laying hands on the, on the sick. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up in heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following them. Confirming the word with, with signs following them, not them following signs. Nowadays, we follow signs. When we hear there's a, there are miracles happy, happening somewhere, you find believers rushing there. <coughs> I mean, climbing over each other. These signs are supposed to be following you, not you following them. So, <coughs> and something else, when Jesus uh, resurrected, after crucifixion, after the resurrection, something interesting really happened. In the book of John, John chapter number 20. John 20, verse 2 to 10. 20. Uh, this is after the re resurrection. She came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, I think that's John, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started to the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the stri stripes, strips of linen lying, but he did not go in. Then, you know, <laughs> People like rushing to go and see Jesus. But when you arrive there at the door, you don't want, you hesitate. Peter, who was behind, arrived and went into the tomb. P Peter didn't care. And this, remember, this other disciple, he's the, John, he's the one who loved Jesus. Jesus loved him. But he was uh, again afraid. So Peter, in the tomb, he saw the strips of the linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Interesting. The cloth was folded nicely. It's like it shows that his body was not taken in a hurry. He took his time to fold that cloth. 
or it, it was not taken by thieves as the Pharisees wanted to imply. You, they wanted people to believe everything laid in order done by Yeshua himself or by the angels. So you find everything was in order. The, nap, the napkin neatly wrapped. And you're like, wow. And then you see, they come and say that they stole the body of Jesus. Nobody stole it. So that is after the crucifixion, what happened. The only thing that I can leave you with, the instructions were, go and change the world. Preach the gospel. Let signs and wonders follow you. In Yeshua's mighty name, amen and amen. If you are there, you don't know anything about Jesus Christ. You want to be part and parcel of the kingdom. Say this prayer after me. Father, I come before you as a sinner. I've sinned against you and against the world. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me. Use me as an oracle. Use me as your servant. I want to be a child of God. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins and he rose again and he's seated on the on your right hand side i believe that i am a child of god today forgive me for my sins accept me in your kingdom in jesus name amen and amen if you say that prayer the angels are rejoicing heaven is rejoicing so join a church near you get in contact with christians in the church they'll show you the way and get a Bible, a New King James Version. Start reading the Bible slowly by slowly. You'll never regret. And Father, I pray for my viewers, each and every one of them, and my listeners. Bless them. Let them understand their mandate on this planet Earth. And let them do something for the kingdom. Bless each and every one of them. Let them start a new life, a new resurrected life in the new kingdom and to change the world in jesus name amen and amen okay guys may the holy one of israel bless you mightily see you next time shalom peace